here we are going to discuss the widely using cutting tool materials and their properties okay first one uh, i am going to introduce high carbon steel tools high carbon steel tools okay the these tools are the the first effective cutting tool use for machining operations are high carbon steel tools okay before the 20th century these are the cutting tool materials available for machining okay before the 20th century okay first uh, cutting tool material used for machining operation is high carbon steel tools okay then high carbon steel tools they actually the material the is a ferrous ferrous alloy is a ferrous alloy alloy containing 0.9% carbon and the 1% around the 1 percent manganese okay around 1 percent manganese okay they still today the high carbon steel tools are using still today high carbon steel tools are using because of uh, its uh, high toughness property it is very important there is the tough uh, its toughness property is very high so because of its toughness property today also we the uh, this uh, high carbon steel tools are used for machine operations okay machine operations then it also having a very good hardness also the rockwell hardness number around the fifth uh, sorry around uh, 62 rockwell hardness number by around 62 okay the material having the material can go to the rockwell hardness number hardness number is 62 around the 62 the ferrous alloy is a high carbon tool is a ferrous alloy 9% carbon 1% manganese then uh, this uh, material can give around the 62 hardness number and it can give higher toughness is the the among the previously we discussed the material the cutting tool materials among this material the tough most of material is the high carbon steel tools the today also even today the high, uh, uh, for the machining high carbon steel tools are using okay still using okay then next uh, cutting tool material we are going to use is we are going to discuss is the high speed steel tools high speed steel tools why that name is given with the high speed steel tools at the time is able to cut with the higher high speeds compared to the high carbon steel tools the second the cutting tool material high speed steel tools so in we are calling the hss tools hss tools okay then uh, there is introduced the beginning of the 20th century at the beginning of the 20th century this high speed steel tools are introduced okay then uh, at the time it is extremely popular in the industry for machining because with the uh, that mean uh, it can use for high speed cutting application high speed cutting application that mean cutting velocities can uh, accelerate increases so that the material removal rate increases 
okay with using this high speed hss tool material removal rate increases because of high speed cutting application okay so that what happened the production rate increases production rate increases okay so that uh, at the time it is uh, extremely popular then this hss uh, tool the manufactured using the two methods the hss tool manufactured in two methods called m series and the t series okay t series different uh, series the uh, two different series m series okay m series and t series in high speed steel tools so what is the difference between these two tools the nowadays the actually the m series are extremely popular in industry then uh, m series uh, over 95% uh, of uh, hss tools are m series tools because of its uh, cheap and uh, its hardness so the molybdenum base m mean the molybdenum main alloy material is molybdenum is a the high hss tool is a ferrous metal ferrous alloy metal the main alloying element is molybdenum main alloy metal is the molybdenum that's why it's called m series for the uh, t series main alloy metal is tungsten tungsten okay tungsten the molybdenum tungsten the m series and the t series not only the molybdenum the molybdenum use up to around the 10% 10% molybdenum and also and also the small amount of uh, chromium vanadium and tungsten also they are in n series molecule and also the cobalt also apply cobalt material cobalt also apply the cobalt can give higher hot hardness this cobalt is uh, when adding the cobalt they expecting the expecting the uh, retain hardness in elevated temperatures okay then uh, n series contain these materials chromium uh, vanadium and tungsten and the cobalt the series the tungsten is the main alloy in t series tungsten is the main alloying uh, metal with the ferrous so it having the 12 to 18% tungsten 12 to 18% tungsten with the chromium vanadium and the cobalt okay then the uh, but uh, more these two series the m series extremely popular in industry the today 95% over 95% over 95% use uh, m series hss2 okay because of uh, its uh, hardness property and also its cheapness then uh, the, what are the method to manufacture this uh, hss2 the method is casting manufacturing method manufacturing method what are the method to manufacture this uh, hss tool first one is the casting forging and sintering these are the method the manufacturing this uh, material uh, hss tools okay then the rockwell hardness number rc number around the 65 around 65 then uh, earlier i explained the uh, high carbon steel tools that is around 62 
here is 65 the slight increase but the important property is this hardness can retain in elevated temperature that is the important property okay of the hss tool so it can use for high speed cutting application because it can stand it can give it hardness in elevated temperatures because in high speed always temperature increases temperature the heat generation rate of heat generation high so that the temperature increases in high speed cutting application but hss tool can retain its hardness even at the elevated temperature that is the important property of hss tool at the time uh, cutting speed rapidly increases when introducing after introducing hss tool at the beginning of the 20th century so the production rate also increases because of higher rate of uh, material removal okay then the next uh, third uh, important cutting tool material we are going to introduce is third cutting tool material we are going to discuss cast cobalt alloy Next uh, important cutting uh, tool material is cast cobalt alloy. Introduced in uh, around the 1950-15, around 1915, it is introduced after HSS tool. The, this contain this material HSS cast cobalt alloy. It's alloy material contain the 42. 55 percent 40 to 55 percent cobalt you know the cobalt material the 40 to 55 percent of cobalt contained in this uh, cast cobalt alloy that's why it's called the cast cobalt alloy then the chromium around the uh, around 30 percent chromium included chromium then uh, so 15 to 20 percent tungsten included okay this is the alloying uh, composition for the cast cobalt alloys the cobalt the chromium and the tungsten it can give rockwell hardness number around the 55 to 65 rockwell hardness number Okay, around this range is very according to the alloying composition okay according to the alloying composition this vary from 55 to 65 the important property is it can give higher hot hardness compared to high carbon steel tools and high speed steel tools that mean uh, that is important property it can give higher hot hardness compared to hss tool so it can use to cut material higher than the HSS tool at the time. Okay, it can give it can cut material higher higher speed than the HSS tool. But if the toughness is less than the HSS and high uh, high carbon steel tools, nowadays this uh, cast cobalt alloys are not uh, become popular because of its uh, uh, less toughness property then uh, nowadays this uh, cast cobalt alloy cutting tools are used for only for limited applications okay limited applications okay next uh, important uh, cutting tool material we are going to discuss is the fourth one The very important one, fourth one, carbide tools. Okay. 
this cutting tool material is uh, very important because nowadays most of the machine operations done on done using the carbide tools that's why this is important around more than the 80% of mach machining done using the carbide tools in the all around, around the world okay around 80% then uh, this is uh, introduced around 1930 is introduced around 1930 after cast cobalt alloy introduced the in very important property of the carbide tool is higher for hardness and it's a wear resistance and it's wear resistance okay there is a two important property higher hot hardness and the wear resistance these are the main important property for the carbide tools okay then the carbide also two major groups same as the uh, HSS tool, carbide tools also having the two major groups divided into two major groups. What are these two major groups? Let's see. Titanium carbide and tungsten carbide. Tungsten and the titanium. Tungsten carbide and titanium carbide. Then how these uh, these are manufactured? Tungsten carbide or titanium carbide. Particles are the small particles are tungsten or uh, titanium carbide. Small particles are bounded. Together in a cobalt matrix, bounded together in a cobalt matrix using the powder metallurgy technique called sintering. Okay, method is called manufacturing method is called sintering. So sintering is the powder metallurgy uh, technique manufacturing this hard material. Okay, then this is uh, that mean uh, this. Uh, this is pressed under greater pressure with the higher temperature to a this kind of uh, mold to get this kind of chips these uh, carbides are available as small small chips insert type chips okay the this carbide tools are available with this kind of insert type chips the wide variety of insert type chips are available Okay, these chips can mount on this. Uh, can be mount on the steel shank. Okay, these uh, carbide tools are available as the the insert type. Mostly available as the insert type chips. Then the the cobalt. The composition of the cobalt determine the. Uh, hardness and the toughness if the cobalt composition is 3 to 6 percent you higher hardness hardness if cobalt composition is increases to 6 to 6 6 to 15 percent the toughness property increases Toughness probably increases slightly drop of the hardness. Okay. Then, uh, when using this uh, 
carbide tools, the extremely popular these insider type chips. That means this carbide tools, insider chips mounted on the steel shank. Okay. That means this is the insert chip carbide chip then this is mounted on the steel shank it is mounted on the steel shank it is mounted on the steel shank Okay. Then the this is mounted using the screw mostly the steel shank with the steel shank or uh, high carbon steel shank. Then this is the uh, carbide tip. steel chain okay then what happen when it mounting on this steel shank the steel shank having the toughness property the carbide having the hardness property the combining these two can give toughness property and also the hardness property for the combined tool as a combined tool Okay, this, this is the cutting area, this is the, the tip of the cutting tool, then the mechanical shock passes to the carbide tool, it, it is passes to the steel shank, the steel shank can absorb this mechanical shock, okay, because of this higher uh, wear resistance of the tip, it can give longer tool life, this is how, this is the method obtaining the two different properties, two different direction properties to a cutting tool. Use of steel chain, use of cutting the carbide tip can give hardness property and also the toughness property. Okay, So that uh, this insider type chips are extremely popular in nowadays. It's, uh, this steel uh, carbide tip can clamp using the screw or some situation it is uh, welded the, this uh, tip is uncoded especially the uncoded tips are welded to this uh, steel shank okay permanently it is welded then uh, when using this uh, replacing type when using this uh, replacing type that is very important with using this insert type with the screw the, after we have this uh, carbide tip, it can replace. That is one of the important things. Okay. Then the, this carbide tool tip also we can uh, this uh, sorry carbide tools we can divide that into two coated or plain steel tools. Okay. Coated or plain steel tools. Quoted oh, in carbide tools also categorized into two quoted tools. Uncoded tools. Okay, coated tools and uncoated tools. That means uh, coating. Coating mean if we take a plain carbide tool, we take the plain carbide tool. Okay, the coating is applied. 
titanium nitride or aluminium oxide coating you see very small thin layer round Fifteen micrometer round the fifty micrometer layer. This layer thickness is round the fifteen micrometer. This layer aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide O use a titanium nitride okay the coated using this is the carbide this material is carbide is coated using this aluminium oxide or titanium nitride these two are very hard material than the carbide the aluminium oxide in it's very hard material and also then titanium and nitride also very hard material when it coated with these materials coated with these materials what happen its true life increases true life increases 10 10 times the uncoated time okay that mean uh, true life life is uncoated Coded into ten is greater than true life with coated carbide groups. Okay, more than the ten percent. More than the ten percent. So you can see the coated carbide tools can give ten percent more than more than the ten percent true life compared to the uncoated current. So then the coating is very important. Okay, coating is very important. Aluminium oxide or titanium nitride coating with uh, around uh, 15 micrometer. Around mean uh, mostly it is less than sorry mostly less than 50 micrometer layer is used. Okay, 50 micrometer layer is used. So what is the method to this uh, coating? Okay, coating methods. Two methods used for this coating, aluminium and titanium coating. What are these two methods? The chemical vapor deposition method. Chemical vapor deposition. Chemical vapor deposition method okay. This method is called C U D sorry C V D chemical vapor deposition. The second one physical Second one, the physical vapor deposition method. Physical vapor deposition method PVD. Okay. These are the two methods to apply this coating. Okay, two methods to apply this coating. Then the uh, the important one the important is the important is with the coating it can give 10 times the normal uncoated tool life more than the 10 10 percent so then uh, this carbide tools the coated carbide tools use mostly as the inserted type inserted chip type okay extremely popular in industry and nowadays the more than 80 percent of machining done using the uh, inserted type carbide tools 
okay this is the type codec carbide tools okay okay then next uh, cutting tool material we are going to discuss is uh, ceramic tools next one the ceramic tools okay so what is the number ceramic tools the fast to bolt level 3 4 5 no ceramic tools 5 five ceramic tools okay. ceramic tools developed around the 1950 1950 in usa today the ceramic most of the ceramic tool uh, composed uh, alumina based ceramic tools are used mostly the today the alumina based ceramic tools are used the alumina mean uh, aluminum oxide then nowadays the alumina based ceramic tools are use that mean the uh, aluminium oxide the aluminium oxide particles are filtered at high pressure high pressure and temperature that mean uh, if you take the aluminium small small granular particles then this is the mold is the mold then this is fresh under greater pressure with the temperature the temperature t with the application of temperature so normally the no uh, bonding element added to this uh, sintering process only the aluminum granules small small particles uh, press under greater pressure and the uh, temperature to form the uh, tools that one also uh, form as a this insert type keeps okay the insert type keeps okay insert type keeps so the combining with the the mounting on the uh, steel shank it can give the toughness and the hardness property then uh, this uh, cutting tool materials having the uh, hardness higher than the carbide tools okay then it having the higher wear resistance higher wear resistance but the and also it can give the higher chemical stability the only problem is its the uh, uh, brittleness okay the only only problem is lack of toughness property lack of toughness property so that uh, so limiting property of for use of the ceramic tool is its a lack of toughness it's brittle it can't absorb the mechanical shock okay it can't absorb mechanical shock that mean in case of a mechanical shock there is a more possibility to fracture this tool tip fracture this tool tip in case of uh, mechanical shock and no so not only the mechanical shock it not uh with this stand for the thermal shock shock also okay with using the ceramic tool the chipping resistance are common that mean the chipping the to is a type of tool where removing material particle wise from the cutting tool material okay it also subject to a chipping so that the because of these reasons ceramic tool has limited applications okay then next important cutting tool material is sixth one cubic boron nitride tools
the cubic boron nitride is the second hardest material second hardest material after diamond okay cubic boron nitride subdivision cbn tools so actually this is uh, it having the higher wear resistance but it is very expensive it is very expensive used for uh, used to machine the tool steel why be used to machine the tool steel then uh, when using this cubic boron nitride this very small tip very small tip is mounted on the transfer carbide insert okay let's take this is the transfer carbide insert transfer carbide insert carbide insert carbide then very small tip very small tip is mounted on this uh, cubic boron nitride tip is mounted on the transient carbide insert this is the way of uh, cubic boron nitride material used for the use as a cutting tool very small tip is used uh, mounted on the carbide tools carbide insert tools okay then uh, so it used to machine the tool steel the greater than the hardness 50 rc okay so this is the common application when machine the uh, tool that mean the to machine the for example to machine the hss tool to machine the high carbon steel tools the material is cubic boron nitride tools are used okay the yeah the next uh, important uh, cutting tool material is diamond diamond is the highest hardness material diamond tools seven diamond tool this is the hardest material in the world the mostly the synthetic diamond used for machine operations synthetic diamond that mean the polycrystalline diamond polycrystalline diamond polycrystalline diamond uh, nowadays used uh, as a diamond tool uh, since uh, natural diamond also used for machine operations but nowadays the polycrystalline diamond used as a uh, nowadays machine operations so it's very it is the hardest material so it can give higher wear resistance and it's a uh, same as ceramic tool it's a brittle material so can't absorb thermal shock can't sorry can't absorb mechanical shock so it is mounted on the so it is mounted on the same as in previous mounted on the uh, insert uh, carbide tip carbide tool in it is same as previous cubic boron nitride it is mounted on this is the carbide this is small tips mounted on the small small diamond tip is mounted on this carbide okay carbide then we can then this tool this combination of this uh, tip and this uh, insert can mount on the whatever steel shank or whatever shank this is the 
is the diamond tool the actually is a diamond tool special used for high speed cutting application where accuracy is very critical because uh, because of this higher hardness is not uh, it can give to longer tool life that means its uh, tool geometry not change with the machine time that means this tip not wear out with the machine time it's a very small wear so that uh, when dimensional accuracy is very important situation where the dimensional accuracy is very important the diamond tip tools are used okay diamond tip tools are used so these are the cutting tool materials we are going to discuss at least you should know these uh, seven type of cutting tool materials then this is how the properties are very among these cutting tool materials okay the this the carbide tools is a very important one nowadays the all the most of sorry most of the machining uh, more than 80% of machining done using the carbide tools then uh, secondly the high speed steel tools are very important most of the low cutting speed uh, applications done using the then you see the high speed uh, steel tools most of the maintenance maintenance and repair work done using this high speed cutting tools hss cutting tools so then in this direction hardness increases diamond is the highest hardness then the toughness property increases in this direction wear resistance increases in this direction cutting speed the speed we can give increases in this direction that means high speed cutting application these materials are used for the high speed cutting application thermal shock resistance there is increases in this direction that means thermal shock the uneven expansion and sinkage of the material causes to get the thermal crack in this direction it is increases because of this material this material having higher thermal conductivity so uh, generated heat can distribute it and dissipate and dissipate to environment with this material using uh, in this materials similarly the chipping resistance increases in this direction chipping the particle wise removing this uh, material from the cutting tool is called chipping when comes the cost cost increases in this direction okay this is all about the Uh, cutting tool and cutting tool materials then uh, you should have a idea about this uh, cutting tool materials when selecting a material uh, cutting tool for certain machine applications okay we okay, then next uh, we are going to discuss uh, in the next uh, lecture we are going to discuss uh, uh, tool life the tool uh, tool failure about the tool failure okay let's move to the next one next topic